my name is Lana and welcome to Let's Play Beyond Your Window. And again, I have not really checked what the game's about, so without any further ado, let's just dive in and let's see what is what does the game bring. You're in your room. In front of you there's a notepad. You've left some notes on the last few pages, but none of them can help you find useful ideas. They're only excerpts of concepts with no cohesion. No theories at all, no feelings. Have you lost something? And if so, why? Maybe it's a lack of contact with people. Maybe observing others' lives will help you find what you're looking for. A pure and complete idea. From the window in front of you, you see numerous facades of buildings. Different apartments for different lives. From where you are, you can see the glimpses of these existences. In other faces, you see the shadows of different problems. Difficult situations they don't seem to be able to fix. Maybe they think those situations are impossible to be repaired. As you watch them, you wonder what kind of problems they are dealing with. And what if you could be able to fix them? I guess now we will choose somebody and try to help them. So we have a couple of windows we could click on maybe, red one, blue one, green here, yellow, okay let's start with this one, lonely person perhaps. Heart painful lesson. An apartment occupied by a young and lonely student. He is now immersed in the shadows of his room, looking at the darkness surrounding him. In his head, there's his girlfriend's face. He deadly misses her. He likes to call her and tell her she, he's sorry about everything, that he'll try to do his best to be a better person, but he doesn't know how to say it. Um, <clears throat> what should I say to her? Well. Let's start with the intention. The intention is to bring her back with me. I think, at least. So, maybe I could start with... I think we should talk, Laura. I really love you. Okay, let's just be more pragmatic at the very beginning, at least. Hmm. I don't know, it's very exaggerated. But it could work. I thought you'd want to come back with... No, I'm sorry. Let's apologize first. The more sorry I sound, the better it'll be. Not necessarily. Will she pick up? Hi, Laura. I really need to talk to you. You know, I'm sorry for what I've done. Truly sorry. I want to know what I could do to repair all this situation. To repair this situation? Yes. Yeah. You know all the mess that happened? You mean the mess you've made? Yeah, and I said I'm sorry about it. Oh, I think it did not really help them. Of course you are, but you'd better remember it. And very well. But I... Don't worry, I understood. And I'll think about it. Maybe. She hangs up, leaving the young student by himself. Silent and lonelier. Or maybe I should have told her I love her first. Ah, maybe you should check the apartments I've already visited too. Okay, sounds good. Is there anything I... Oh, there's something I can click here. It's your favorite mug. It changes color when something is hot in it. Your father gave you this lamp. He always had strange tastes, but somehow it fits perfectly in the room. Some tissues and duster. Use them to erase the notes from the chalkboard on the left side of the room. Where's the chalkboard? There's ink. It's almost empty. Picture. Some notes on what you have seen beyond your window. Being brokenhearted leads to uncertainty and fear. Is it right to try to reach a person who doesn't love us? Is it right to continue loving that person and try to go back together? Or should we only accept the passage of time and the changes of the heart? Okay, so just the notes in the picture are the same item here. <clears throat> I don't know, should we check on the guy? Let's just check on the guy first. 
Is Laura with you? Everything is wrong. I guess we did not help him. Oh my god, terrifying mug. It's early morning. The young student's cry is so strong that even people on the street can hear him. Listen, I know you feel bad, but don't you think you're exaggerating? Me? Exaggerating? How could you say something like that? You know exactly how much Laura is important to me. Yes, of course, but... But how can you understand me? You've never been with a girl after all. Hey, I don't think that was necessary. She meant the world to me. Do you get it? The entire world. And now she... She's gone. Forever. Do you know how long is forever? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm only telling you to calm down a little. You really don't get it then. Calm down. How could I ever calm down? I miss her so much. I miss her face. The birthmarks on her left arm. I miss her. Hey, that's enough. Don't get into too many details, please. What? Aren't you here to listen to me and to comfort me? I am, but I don't want the details. Oh, poor me. Even my friends don't want to listen to me. Just like Laura did. Jeez, you realize something, huh? Laura! Where the hell are you? Come back! I won't live without you. Come back to me! Please! I'm so lost. Maybe he's too young to know about love's suffering. Well, given the, the dialogue that we have read just a moment ago, I think Laura is better off without him. He made some mess, I don't know, maybe he cheated on her, maybe he did something really wrong. Maybe he insulted her, abused her, we don't know. But he did do something wrong that made her, you know, leave. And now he's like really codependent and obsessed. Maybe they would be happier apart. But I'm kind of worried that he might jump off the window that we're observing. Or maybe he's too childish to accept. But anyway, Laura won't certainly come back. Because that's how things go. Too bad. Let's go somewhere else, please. You can still check on him. And, and I think we will, will. We will after some other window. What about the blue one? They're very close, you know. Running out of time. Okay, a student again. A small development studio occupies the left side of the third floor. As silent as it may seem, it's a very busy place in which work never seems to end. In this moment, the whole team is focused on implementing new features. The concentration is intense and the schedule tight. One month until the deadline. The whole team is stressed, desperately trying to mediate between a relaxed workflow and an efficient one. But with every choice risks to lead them further from this balance. When you work with someone for a large amount of time, you get to recognize their feelings by the expressions on their faces, or how they move, or how they talk. So, as the lead artist moves close to the desk, the director instantly senses the incoming problem. Surprisingly, the lead's face is at ease, or at least more than usual. There are no nervous sticks on his face. The fact that he hasn't shaved for almost a month makes him look even better than usual. Um, sorry, but... We have received emails from two members of the concept art de department. What happened? They decided to leave the team. What a splendid idea. Why so suddenly? They found new opportunities in other studios, and the project doesn't inspire them anymore. That definitely is a problem. Of course we have to close their contracts, but even two less people will create huge issues. Yes, of course. As our project is a 2D game, we'll have to reschedule the workload for the department. So, what should we do? Uh, cut some features. This I mean, if we distribute, there's gonna be overwork. If we cut, I don't know, let's just cut. Are you sure? Won't be a problem? We we'll save some time for the development. And you can always just release the DLC or update, right? And the department won't be stressed out. Exactly. Let's just also care, care about the people, you know? Stressed people will not work well. Understood. Fine, I'll tell the others then. Good. Both in little and bigger studios, problems with the department's members are common. People leaving the team or not properly doing their job or simply not good at communicating. All this could lead to serious and impactful problems, but people are not the problematic element. And that 
Even if already clear to the director, it becomes more obvious as the tech leader approaches. I'm sorry to disturb you, but we have a problem. No problem? What kind of problem? One of the programmers has made some mistakes in the code, but he realized, realized just now. What kind of mistakes? Well, we have found some, but not all of them yet. They don't seem to be dangerous, but they sure are a lot of pain. And he uploaded them without checking. What is he, an idiot? I've already told him that. That's just wonderful. One month until the deadline and some moron makes mistakes in the code. Well, we have two options now. Hmm. Leave them with and push until the release. Fix them, but it'll take time. We can deliver back the game, you know that as well. Of course, we can tell the producer we'll have to schedule a new date for the release. It won't happen. Alright? We can afford it. Exactly. We'll never gain, gain more days. We have to manage the time we have and fix everything. That sure is troublesome, ain't it? That's gonna be difficult. Sitting in his chair, the director continues working silently and focused. Around him, a small number of other people, like a troop of soldiers, follows his directions. And even though sometimes his methods may be harsh and the schedule is tight, the project calmly proceeds towards the deadline. Not all the problems have been repaired, but at least everything seems to be fine. Okay, so I guess this window went well. They cut some features. It's not a huge success, but it's not bad. Okay, let's check on the red guy again. Oh, he's still crying. Please don't kill yourself. And that's it. He's still crying. Okay, so we go to the yellow ones and then we get back to our studio. Tiny tortures. I really like the music. They, they make a really great ambience, like some kind of indie theater or something like this. And the chalkboard drawings. Nice. A large and comfortable apartment occupied by a couple, a mom and her husband. Have you finished the book we bought last month? Which book? The one with the red cover. Don't you remember it? Oh, that one. Yes, I do remember. And you have finished it, then? Guess I haven't. I totally forgot about it. You forgot? Yes, I did. Why you ask? I told you when we bought it that I wanted to read it, decided that I would have after you, and now you forgot about it. But what's wrong with it? It's a book on the end of the world. Well, I mean, she could always start reading the book if he forgot about the book. And... Come on, what's the problem? They can read it simultaneously, just use two different bookmarks. It's not that difficult. You live together. The relationships between husbands and wives are sometimes difficult. Every position taken means having the other as opponent. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, you say. Of course it isn't. But what does it mean? You're always like that. Like what? Like that how? He starts to think that how stupid the situation is. How absurd it is. But still, he can't do anything about it, as frustrating as it may seem. You're careless and don't pay any attention. I'm trying my best. I know you're trying, but you've got to try and stay focused. Or at least more focused. Of course, but... But... You're talking as if you're better than me. What do you all, why do you always have to say that? Because you make me feel like that. I hope you don't think it's intentional, at least. The point is that you can't decide who to judge when you want. Life doesn't work like that. And you can't decide what others can or can't do? Well, no, of course. But what I'm saying is that I don't find it correct that she, what you do with me. Or should I not tell you about something that I don't like about you? And have you listened to your tone? What if I didn't? I'm sorry about all this. I'm sorry about the book, about the argument, about everything. It's okay. It came from both of us. Yeah, right, but... Nothing in this was nice from my part. Not from mine either, I'd say. So, what now? Can you just have the book and let her read it? She gently hugs him, weeping. She weeps about the book. Exaggerating much? I hope they are fine. Okay, let's check on the studio. Did you start new pro- I, He's still crying. Too bad. But, you know, he didn't commit suicide. So, 
That's something. So, road ahead. There's more colors, more of them, I guess. Cool hat, bro. Really dig the corgis or, I don't know, pugs, whatever it is. Fast and concentration linger in the meeting room. Everyone's gazes don't know where to go. They just wander from face to face insistently. Nobody speaks as they're all waiting for the director to say something. But he's still thinking. He's trying to find the fish he's looking for in a stormy ocean of ideas. He knows he's there, somewhere, waiting for him. Hidden in the darkness, dim into his mind's abyss. And then, suddenly, a young girl decides to talk. She's been with the team for less than three months, but has already shown how skilled she is. So the director and all the team listen to her, focused on every word. Is there really something wrong with the game entirely set in an apartment? I mean, why don't we try it out anyway? I don't think we'll solve anything by sitting here waiting for better ideas to come out. We all we have all the references for it, and the market analysis seems pretty clear when it comes to survival horrors. So I think we should do it. It's an interesting idea and has enough space for each department. The director seems happy, and so all the team is, too. He's still thinking about the idea, as he's not entirely convinced about it. The previous game has already been finished, so it's now time to decide what to do next. There are some ideas, concepts and mechanics the team wants to explore, but... Are they all worth the efforts needed? The whole team is obviously concerned about the budget that the game will need, but mostly the game's profit when it will launch. Could a game like this work well? Will someone accept and finance the idea? It really is a good idea. After all, each one of us has a different life and, of course, less in a different apartment. Our experiences could grant solidity, strength to the game's theme. But there is the financial aspect, and we can't just jump ahead without thinking about it in detail. A horror game. I think you're right about being probably the right project for us. As we always had that genre in mind in our previous works, but never truly tried to fully work on it. But... Are we so sure about it? I mean, would someone be really interested in something like that? Not that I don't like it, really, but I'm worried. Would we really make something at least interesting with that genre? We tried to go full horror with any project before. We never tried to go full horror with any project before, so I don't know. I'm afraid we should stick to our comfort zone. And I don't really have any other ideas here, so let's take the risk. I know what you mean. That fear is completely logical, but sometimes it's better to try harder and do something different. Our team is already well formed. Even though we are known by many people, publishers and auto development studios, if we decide to make something entirely new, we could fail. But what would happen even with a project similar to things we've already made? Sticking to our comfort zone won't mean that we'll keep making good projects. It only means that we'll keep on making the same kind of stuff. But if we focus more on what we can and want to say to players, and on how we can do with that new game, then we'll make something that at least for us will mean something. And if we make something meaningful for us, that will never be wrong. Is it suicidal for the entire team? Of course it is. But think about it. I don't see why we should not follow this idea. I think she's right and we should do it. Okay, so I wonder what the next game will be. Let's just check on them. He's crying. The meeting is over and now the studio is empty. So we will not find out. Okay, let's go back to the yellow guys. There's no one here for now. Okay, they left. They went to the studio with the studio guys maybe. Okay, green group then. Happy balloons. In this apartment lives a young girl, in the morning of boredom, she's waiting for a phone call. All over the walls and furniture, there are signs that she's alone. Her loneliness, though, is only proof for, him, for her complete freedom. Freedom to act, freedom to choose. She can do whatever she wants, use whatever she wants to spend some time while she waits. Cigarettes, mirror, lamp, books, bed. 
TV, phone call. Let's go with this. A small group of books. Even though they are few, she likes books, but doesn't want to fill the room with them. So she has bought only the ones she likes the most and borrows others from a library nearby. Same for me. She takes one of the books from the shelf after careful choice. It's a book of poetry it's written by Ars Arseny Tarkovsky. She opens it, searching for a specific poem. We celebrated every moment of our meetings as epiphanies, just we two in all the world, bolder lighter than a bird's wing. You hurtled like vertigo down the stairs leading from most moist lilac to your realm beyond the mirror. First meeting. I really love this poem. Okay, cigarette break. In the ashes is a cigarette she was smoking a while ago. Yeah, okay, smoke it. She lights it, then takes a bath. The smoke flows in the air, filling the room calmly. She feels relaxed as she watches the small cloud disappear in the space around her. Here's the phone. Hi, Julie, how are you? Hi, well, I'm fine, thanks. What about you? I'm fine too, just keeping busy, you know? Yeah, that's good. So... Yeah, about that, um... I think I can't, sorry. You can't? Yes, I really can't live with you. I would like to really, but I just can't. I should abandon everything I have now, do you understand? It's not simple at all. Even though I love you, it's really... It isn't simple. And why haven't you told me before? I was afraid and, well, I still had to think about it. So, what now? I... I think we can no longer stay together. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, of course you are. Listen, I... I have some things to do now, so... That's good. Don't worry. It's okay. Bye. Bye. That's really sad, and I don't know. So if we didn't smoke but watch TV, would she come around? The idea of being alone again for God knows how long hurts her. The love she felt is already disappearing. And the poem that we had. The words of a favorite poem come to her mind, gaining a new meaning. All those feelings flowing silently to her heart slowly becoming memories, but still, she thinks, there's some kind of hope. Hope for the future, for the decisions she still can make. That was sad. Let's just check on our yellow guys. Oh, they are back, perfect. A girl is a gun. That's... That's very interesting. Oh, so that's the daughter. A calm evening and a family reunion. So probably they don't know she's a lesbian and she's afraid to tell them. But her girlfriend dumped her so there's like no news. She can keep it in hiding maybe. So feelings fill the apartment's atmosphere. Mom. So how are you, sweetie? I still don't really know. Love affairs can be complicated, very complicated. Yes, indeed. What's important, though, is not to fall in a hatred trap. One must always love even if he's not loved. But how can one still love? Each one of us is lonely. We are lonely because we are singular individuals. And even when we live with someone, when we love someone and share our life with that person, we are still singular individuals. And so we are still alone. Once we understand that, we can comp comprehend what love is mutable. And we can only accept the fact that it's mutable. Understanding and accepting means that one's love seems to be faded between two or more people. It really isn't. She left you. That's true. But you two have been connected for some time and you still are, as human beings. As old friends and ex-lovers. This unity, unity, when you think about it, is strong enough to cancel all the hate you could feel. And even if now you feel lonely physically and sentimentally, that doesn't mean you'll not meet someone that will once again ease these feelings. To put hope in the future. These words reverberate in the lonely girl's mind. Maybe they'll stay in her head forever. 
As long as she truly hopes, things will get better. Surely as long as she tries her best to fulfill that hope. But to have hope means to act and not to do nothing but waiting for better opportunities. I hope she will be fine. She will find someone new. Beyond your window you've seen glimpses of different lives, each with different situations, different problems, and different approaches. Now your notebook is filled with notes of each and those characters. Some are authentic, others may be more unbelievable. Yet, all of them share something, a hidden spot in those people's lives. Answers to questions you couldn't make, but what could reveal more about them. And maybe about yourself too. But what if you could ask those questions? What if, thanks to your fantasy, you would be able to ask them who they are and what they most desire? What do you most wish for? I think I'm still looking for something. I'm looking for a project that could lead me to the answers I need. Answers about the world around me, even that inhabits it. And about myself too, of course. I hope I'll find it soon, but... In the meanwhile, we all try to jump from project to project. And everyone on the team find their own answers in their way. So hopefully, one day I'll be able to find mine. I'm director of independent video game development team. It's a small team, but we're happy about it. I was the lead artist in a small development studio. Sometimes it's tiring, but nice. Well, what I most wish for, I guess I wish to be less insecure. Insecure about my abilities and my own work, that is. I can work better if I'm in an environment in which people tell me what they think about. Like, if they like my work or if they think there are things that should be fixed. But it's a little less training. I constantly need feedback, so just difficult. Great hat man, under one. Just a technical lead in development studio. We make interesting games and my job is to ensure that they properly work. I just wish for the same thing as many other workers wish for. A calm and comfortable workplace that could suit me. But in the end, things are good as they are. The people on the team are nice and the director is a good friend, so I can't complain. And after all, it's not so simple to go somewhere else to work when you're in the middle of a job. So for now, I'll just stay here and enjoy the next projects. The intern! How are you? I'm a game design intern in a small studio. It's very exciting because I always want to work there. I'm still unsure about it, but for now I just want to do what I like. My only desire is to be able to make games that could be an experience rather than pure entertainment. I'm a nurse in a very small clinic. I wish my husband could pay more attention to me. He's a good man, but sometimes he just gets lost and he forgets about everything. I wish he could pay more attention. Just an average comic book artist. Oh, something very simple. I'd just like to be able to stop drawing and retire. I'm very tired of it. And I want to focus more on my family. I'm a university student. Currently I'm studying foreign languages. I would like to love and be loved. That's the most important thing for me. Who are you? Okay, Julie, so we have not seen her, then that's how she looks like. I'm a graduate in art and specialization in theater. At the moment, I'm looking for a job. Mm, I think what I want the most... I wish for the people to be less pressing when it comes to relationships. I don't like forced relationships. When I say I'm not ready for something, I expect the person I'm with to understand me. I think everyone needs their own free space. It's a shame when others try to force them to raise it. And the last person. University student. I'm into loving rather than studying, but I want to be a doctor. Don't wish for Laura. Oh, 
I wish to be able to spend all my life with Laura and not be as lonely anymore. So Laura, what about you? Marketing student. I love to travel, so my object is to open a travel agency. What I would most wish for, I guess is for people to take sentimental affairs more seriously. I'm tired of selfish people. There must be some more consideration of each other's feelings and friendships, love and affairs between individuals in general. And our sleepy friend. I'm a mathematics student, nothing really interesting. I wish I could sleep without my best friend calling me in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a really good wish. He's always worried because of his relationship with his girlfriend. And when something's wrong, he doesn't consider at all other people's feelings. Or if they are doing something. That's well, that was true. He was very childish and selfish. Who are you? And what do you most wish for? I'm not going to answer these questions aloud, but it's definitely some food for thought, you know. We can just observe other people, see that each of them has different problems, different personalities. That was a really nice experience, not just a game, but just great experience when you think about it. And it's the same among your friends. You just know them, you know their main you know like topic in life, what's happening right now, but you don't really realize what are the some other problems they are going through. You don't really know the most intimate feelings they have. I really like this experience. I hope you enjoyed the game. If you want to play it again, maybe you can just try other sub choices. Uh, so I do recommend to play it and try it on your own. Maybe I will replay it just to try uh, something else. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.